learn to do work. Um, I could work with pastels there. I learned how the Impressionists worked and built colors. Um, that's what I remember from it. I also remember that I could visit the museum anytime I wanted to um, yeah. and go up and wander around in the galleries. That was wonderful for a girl. I guess I was about 13 or 14. And I uh, discovered Van Gogh that way because they had a really awesome exhibit during that time. I think the reason I don't work realistically is that up until that point, I'd done things as realistic as I could possibly do them. And then I discovered there was a whole other way to do it I'd never seen before. Of course, I hadn't had any art history. So discovering Van Gogh was big. And then from then on, I kind of went in that direction. I was always looking for a painterly style. Yeah. Uh, I had an excellent high school teacher. He was, I had him for junior high and high school and he was an illustrator. He would give us a title and I'd have to work to the title, but he pretty much let us do whatever we wanted beyond that. And um, he encouraged me a lot. Now, did any of them uh, stand out as far as how to get started in composition? Any of them have an impact on you on that? Well, topic? Mr. Penfield in school, required a preliminary sketch and I used to just work it out it's a small you make a little square or rectangle whatever your format is and work within that sort of planning your lights and darks and your shapes that helps a lot but after you've been doing it for about 20 years now I don't have to think about I don't have to do the preliminary I can start working and working it out I'm not sure where to look with this am I looking at the camera or is this the camera yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, so that was good. It was a nice way to start. And now the way I work now is just that I start and go from there. You know, I work intuitively. A lot of people have seen me demonstrate where I just use a squirt bottle and put liquid acrylic or watercolor on the paper to start. I make uh, what I think is a fairly good start. And then I go from there and build and build and keep fixing it and moving it as I need to. I love to lift. So I'm not afraid of losing the white paper the way some artists might be. I just start lifting. If I put something down and I don't like it, I get it out of there or I lift a little bit. It's part of my composing too. I'm always thinking, okay, I need a white there and I can take it out at that moment and save that spot. So I'm, well, just, I'm really just having fun and problem yeah. solving when I'm working. Yeah. And you've got, you say you get to the point where it comes real natural. Let's see if we can break yes. the natural composition down. And right. Okay. In the world were you thinking? Let's go to your first. <laughs> okay. I have a, I have a start there on, on your list. Um, number six. Number six. Yeah. Well, I don't have a number six. You said six. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Okay, that was the last one I sent you. I thought you got it. Um, you do or you don't? No, I don't have it. So. <laughs> okay, okay, let's just take one of them. Let's see. I'm looking at the list to see one that you can still see the start. <laughs> okay, yeah. try Moon Dance number four. Okay. Um, this is interesting. It's never gotten into Florida watercolor, and um, it's it's not really. No, that's urban construction. That's an early painting. Should I just go through them? Yeah, this let's is talk, uh, talk a little bit about, break, it, break this down for us a little bit in why this comp, it definitely works. And uh, for us who aren't trained in this, uh, tell us what you were thinking. And, and now, do you start with a plan or does it evolve? This one evolved. Mm -hmm. um, I just put color out on the palette that I want and I start working and it builds. You can see that there's some work is on top of other work and it just keeps building up. But um, this, there's also a layer of gel medium underneath some of this. So when you see those whites that have been lifted, that's coming off the gel medium. On the right, up in the right hand corner, there's a white with blue around it kind of, that's white paper, I can tell. Oh. But in the in the center, that's white that's been lifted out of the blue at the very top. Center top, there's a place where you can kind of see that I've lifted the white out. So this, I'm making it, even back, this was in the 90s. I, 
I was still just making it up as I went. Before they had the term working intuitively, I was working this way. So that's a good example of. Now, if you uh, were already in that. Sue, if you were in a class or teaching, uh, what would you say about composition, you know, based on this one or maybe the next one? You're right. I should mention that. But yes, I I suggest to people that if they don't know where to start, they look at um, a composition by another artist or uh, an advertising picture, something that's already been worked out. The composition is already there. There's no way when you work loosely like this, you're going to have it look exactly like what you're working from. What your look, what I want them to see is how it's composed and where the lights and darks are so that they, this is just a practice. I would never suggest somebody do this for the work they put into a show. But if you're just learning this and you're trying to work out, how do you do an abstract? That's a good start. If you look at something that's already composed, even by a master, you could take a a painting by somebody well-known to all of us, even Van Gogh, I mentioned his work, um, and just sort of imitate the composition. It's all there. Um, That's amazing. Does that help? I hadn't thought of that, but you, so you would just say, what about the components are in that painting? That, I guess, yeah. you know, they stick out at you, but I guess we just don't take the time to analyze what's going well, on. Well, in a class, I'll go around and say, well, do you see this and this? And I'd suggest you start with that. Yeah. I get that. And that's your underpainting. That's what you start with. And then you go to the, I the guess next go, step. Yeah, we can go around to all 94 participants on here and force the, No, we won't do that. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's uh, let's take a look. This next one's very colorful, and uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, let's see, pull that up for you. All right, there it is. And this okay. is a beautiful piece, uh, color-wise, and, but it's got some really strong right. shapes in here. This is my favorite, just about my favorite piece I've done, and it it did it was in Florida watercolor, and it won an award. So. I'm really happy with this piece. It hasn't sold and I really don't mind if I ever sell it, but it ended up with lots of layering and um, it's really hard to see the beginning. You know, once I have a start, the underpainting, you can sort of see it on the left where there's some light beige showing and then that color comes out the opposite side. Um, And plus my whites were planned. I have to say probably with this, when I got the start, I sort of outlined where I, the whites I wanted to keep. Also, um, I build up, of course, from the lights to the darks. So the darks are sort of defining the lights. And that's, a, that's of yeah. course, a good compositional tool to put your dark darkest darks next to your lightest lights or, or wherever you want the eye to go. However, in this one, it's I didn't have a title yet. The title is called Broken Wings and Other Things because it looks like strata. It looks like um, things that are piled up maybe in the earth. It it also sort of is a landscape to me. There's some water at the bottom and at the top of the sky. And I think it looks like whatever is happening here is bursting out into the top. And I do that on purpose. I want action. I want motion. Um, I work a color through too. You can see how the white that starts at the top works its way down through, or the green, all the greens speak to each other and all the browns speak to each other. I'm deliberately doing that. But then I love the things that watercolor will do that I can't, I, it really, you can't do it with oil necessarily. You can do it with other, like acrylic, but do you see down in the bottom right where there's a white area where I've, I've painted a, a glaze of white I wanted it to run quite a bit. You can see that it's running, but then I dropped in alcohol or I'm not sure if it's alcohol or water to get some splash there. So I was trying to get that feeling of open space more than working a lot of detail into it. But mainly I want people to just see the strength of the composition and it is cursiform, but I didn't really think about that when I was doing it. But lots of times, When I'm composing, I get into a place where the paint just kind of flows and I can't really tell you that after years of painting that I consciously stop and think this needs that. Sometimes it speaks to me. 
I'll put a painting aside and come back to it another time. And then you can see what's missing or what you have to do to uh, increase the impact of it. Now you're uh, mixing all this on your palette. Uh, you don't plan ahead of time the colors. It, it just comes to you as you go, right? Right. And I will tell you that the reds you see were more pink before. And I went back quite a bit later and made them redder because they needed to hold up against all that, the dark colors. Hmm. So. Now, here's one. Uh, I almost see a silhouette back there. I don't know if that's what you meant. That's right. Well, I told you a little bit about this. I'll tell the others. It's um, part of a series. There were seven pieces and it really, I was drawing a parallel between creation in uh, the Bible, Genesis, and the creating that artists do. And that only came about because I did some marbling and that figure appeared in this on this paper that was at the start. And then it was up to me to make it into something more. <laughs> I put a lot of things around it, but the spirit in the center, this is the spirit moves from Genesis. And I had a, I had a painting that was named Genesis and I had one that was called, um, well, the final one on it's, it's, you know how artists say um, the spirit moved me uh -huh. or I have a Genesis of an idea. We uh -huh. use those words, but they, and I try to visually portray them. Um, the final piece was called realization rather than, you know, peace. You, uh, I, talk a little bit, some of the shapes in here, you know, a lot of us artists who paint portraits, I could see some wonderful backgrounds in a lot of these areas. Yeah, how do you get that? <laughs> yeah, how do you get those textures in that? Uh, so start with the one at the top, that blue and that those lines. How how does that happen? Well, I I felt a responsibility to repeat the shape in, that are the the marbling in the figure to make it appear instead of like it was printed there. I wanted it to be included in the rest of the painting, so I repeat those lines and shapes that you see in the figure. And at the top, it's just, I needed, I put a blue in there and then I carried it through to the left, but the darker color, I don't think it's black. I think it's a dark blue or, or you know, I, the, I sold this painting, so I haven't seen it for a while, but um, I also lifted white out to the right in the red part. And um, there, I think there's a little marbling on the left side where there's a blue that's up going up. Yes, right there. Um, that looks like marbling to me too. I might have added yeah. marbling. And how do you get that? The... You, you have to buy um, the gel medium that you put okay. in first and then you float liquid acrylic on top of the of it. And you also have to treat the paper. So you just look up marbling and it's fairly easy to do. And it's a good way to start an abstract because you have no idea really what it's going to look so like. It is a little bit of pouring then, huh? Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. A little Lori, uh, Lori asked a question. Uh, so yeah. You know those blue uh, strings at the top? How do, yes. you get, how do you get those strings like that? I paint them. I use a small brush. <laughs> well, I don't really use much smaller than a six, but that's a good pointy brush doing that. Um, so those are just lines from a brush, just very random? Yes. Well, no, I planned it. I mean, I wanted it to go <laughs> in the direction it goes because of the, the yeah. figure. I wanted to call your yeah. attention to her, to that, to the spirit in the middle. How much of it is uh, acrylic versus watercolor? I think this is nearly all watercolor and you can see the whites that were lifted. Um, I didn't use white paint, that's that's lifting. Up in the left-hand corner where it's brown, um, you see the lifting there, it's gray and brown, but you can see white through it. And then down on the right where there's a, a triangle coming up, underneath it you see white, that's the white of the paper. When I was doing this, I wasn't really getting into acrylic except in the sense of using it for marbling. Love it. Uh, let's do another one. We're, we're Thanks. Right out of time. This is, oh my goodness, this has got to be the favorite one of the, all oh, well, the ones I've seen. Well, I love it, but it didn't get in Florida watercolor either. 
Um, <laughs> and I will tell you something here. I think most of the artists will, will understand if I tell you that wasn't a woman to start with. It was just color. I was just moving color around and I got all this action going. And then I noticed the corner and I thought it looks like a moon. And I realized it looked like a figure of a woman, but the face wasn't there. And I, sh I entered it in some things without the face, just because I thought everyone else would see that there was a face, that that was a figure, but people don't see it. I was getting a lot of uh, rejection about this painting. And I, so I put the face in so people would know my intent you know, and called it moon dance. So they knew that the circle at the top is the moon and the figure is leaping sort of, you know. That's just uh, incredible. Uh, Cheryl wanted to know, could you just uh, give us a recap of what basic uh, mediums do you use uh, all in general, all for all your painting? I, I nearly always start with watercolor. Um, the underpainting is, is all watercolor, but then I go to acrylic. You can see I get some textures. Um, and that's often acrylic, but geez, I mean, to the right of the figure there up near where her arm would be, there's, a, that looks like white that's been dropped into um, grays and blues. But you can see the arm on the other side where it looks like she has like a puppy sleeve. It's, um, that's all watercolor. You can see how transparent it is. Maybe the dark blue, the sort of royal blue could be acrylic. See, after I finish this, I really don't, I can't tell you exactly what I did because I'm kind of in a, um, a mind spot where I'm just letting it fly. Um, and the arm was just lucky that on the left, there, there's a little bit of a wrist or an arm coming out, which I hope helps define it as a figure. I sold this one too. So somebody loved it. And uh, <laughs> so I love I, it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And the brushes you use, what type do you use and size? Yeah, I I love my um, one and a half inch flat. I do that a lot. This isn't a very big piece. So, and this is pretty much a square. It was framed as a square. Um, but I I use all kinds of uh, round brushes too. I, I use um, number six, eight, 10, 12. I like good, um, good pointy brushes and they makes all the difference. Don't use cheap brushes. All right, now here's a total different one. Look at this. Um, well, this is, this is last year, so it's different. And um, I went through quite a lot in my life from the year in 2020 and 2021. I was ill, but I came back to painting and there's a lot of um, collage in this one. The blues and greens are a lot of painted, they're painted, um, uh, tissue paper. And then you can see the rice paper. You can see the lines, the unru, I think it's called, the paper that has strings in it. Yeah. And was, um, that, was that rice paper too, you said? Um, uh, there's rice paper in it. Yeah. Oh, for some reason it went back to four. Okay. This is rice paper. Uh, primarily you use watercolor paper and rice paper? Well, the rice paper is on top. I used uh -huh. medium to put the rice paper on top. In fact, I okay. started with the black. This is really unusual, but I, I learned this from Jean Grassdorf. She teaches, I took one of her classes and she started with black. So I know that's against a lot of watercolor rules, but I'm kind of at the point where I don't want to obey all the rules. So yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. and I was in Mort Salberg's class too, and he starts with throwing paint. So what I did was I filled my a big brush full of very liquidy uh, black and it, it's acrylic, not watercolor. And I threw it to the left from, from right to left. I snapped my brush and it flew all that black you see flying over there. And this little bird almost made itself. It was sitting there on that black slash on the left side. Mm. And I said, geez, that looks like a bird sitting there on that. So I started making a landscape out of it. Um, and it I just love the sea, don't we all in Florida? I love seeing the waves rush in. So I threw some green in there to define the edges of the sea. Not, not much sky color, but then there's also that random tree thrown in on the right to try to make sure everybody knew it was a landscape. Once again, I'm trying not to leave it too um, 
you know, loose and loosey well, that people yeah. can't tell. That's what I like about it. Uh, all your works, I first look at each one, you have the first impression and it's a, it's a painting. And then as you look at it more, more and more uh, open up and you see more and more, uh, not just things, but more of uh, the elements. Now, Thank you, Ron. That's what I want people to see the abstract first. I want them to see the design and the composition and then discover their own things in there that they they find. So what would be the, what would be the focal point on this one? They're kind of the... Uh... <laughs> I don't always have a focal point. I mean, I think your eye is drawn to the white sort of... Yeah. You know, these, off, these off center. Here, yeah. All the whites kind of pull your eye, but I like that bit of, little bit of light um, top middle that's to the right of that like forest that's sticking, you know, that kind of sits in the yeah. top middle. Yeah, um, what, uh, in this collage, do you use a, a glue or the... Uh, no, I use medium. I use medium. I used to love gloss medium, but now I'm trying to sort of use collage for my purposes and not let people know it's collage necessarily. I'm trying to work it in. You can see that I've painted over it. I, I include it. Now you can see that next to the right of the bird, do you see how the blue piece of tissue goes across the black stroke? Yeah. yeah. That's uh, probably a mistake, <laughs> but, oh, okay. but I mean, it's okay. It happened and I'm not going to change it, but that could have looked more like a rock sticking yeah. up there. So I, I, I want to paint into it and out of it. You know, I use whatever color the <clears throat> tissue is. I carry that into the painting. And whatever, if I'm using the rice paper, I like to use it uh, to enhance whatever is there, trying to give it more textures. I've gotten into textures, and I think I told you, Ron, and I'll tell the others, I, I'm working on canvases more because I can use my liquid acrylics and really pour them on and let, let it go. So yeah. that's now, good. Uh, just a, a quick question. I have to go back. Yeah. Uh, this one, right. uh, the yeah. under, what's the underpainting? Uh, where is it? <laughs> yeah, what is the other? I this one that. sort. Of, yeah, this one happened pretty fast. But any of the lights you see, even mm -hmm. but the red too up on her neck looks like yeah. a turtleneck to me. But it's um, all the light areas were kind of the beginning. Now, if you go down where you see what might be her uh, left leg, where there's a light. And then you move to the green. The green is obviously on top of the lighter orange color. The lighter orange color is probably watercolor, but the green is probably a combination of watercolor and acrylic. In a, and I do it transparently. I try to keep it very transparent because that's what I love is yeah. seeing one color through another color. You ever used uh, pumice? No, I haven't. Tell me about it. Well, somebody asked about it. If uh, it compared to gel, I don't know anything about it. But uh, someone asked, it makes me look intelligent. Thank you, all you people, for asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and they catch me up. You know, when I was teaching, there were always students that brought me ideas and new um, new mediums I could use I, that I didn't know about. And it's great to. I don't teach regular classes anymore, but. Um, I enjoyed that aspect of it. My student, I learned as much from my students as I did from you know, I, all the teachers I had. That's amazing. It, Susan or Jackie, do you have any insights on that? Uh, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? Um, pumice is a is like a golden medium that can be used, and um, you can use fluid acrylics over it or acrylics over it. It gives like a sandy kind of appearance. Oh, okay, that's what I would yeah. think with pumice. I mean, yeah. pumice is a grainy thing yeah kind of a grainy thing I thought you were going to tell me I could scratch the watercolor paper with it or something that's uh, what I might be able to <laughs> uh, yeah is a, uh, pumice is a brown volcanic rock okay yeah all I know is I think I use it to clean my nails or something uh, yeah that's what I was thinking it's it's used know. for other things but yeah. <laughs> you know I I don't like I said, I'm not much of a rule follower, but I use whatever I have to. If pumice works or if my thumb works, I was going to tell you a story about a woman I admired and she got into the May show at the Cleveland Art Museum. She told me she painted, she had grapes and they were beautiful. 
in watercolor and she did the, she did all the grapes with her thumb. She just wow. took her thumb and laid it down on purple, like red and, and blue together. And then she made all the grapes <laughs> with her thumb. And see, I love that. Uh, it's <laughs> cool. Well, it's man, not exactly uh, standard. I could probably spend two hours with you, Sue, but. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, no, go to Susan. I want to hear what she has to say. <laughs> Oh yeah, she's. Uh, I love her work. To follow. Well, uh, well, that's a good introduction. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions, Sue. And uh, Susan Hanson. Yes, sir. Hanson is the most uh, misspelled last name in history. <laughs> yes, uh, but she's distinctive. <laughs> and we took advantage of that opportunity that we got it right now, though. Susan, it's wonderful to have you here. So let me highlight you and. Uh, I won't say anything about the uh, hairdo or anything like that. I like <laughs> it a lot. Anyway, hey, you couldn't have two different painters. Oh. It's really, you know, I, people that know my work know I am not an intuitive painter at all. No. I really, no. I'm the opposite. I plan it and it starts here. It Good. starts in my head. Um, my background, for people who don't know, I had an advertising background, you know, solving problems, you have a product, get it out there, make it interesting, memorable, blah, blah, blah. So that is my background. And I still retain that kind of thinking. You know, I want my paintings to be something people have never seen before and also that they can think about. You know, I mm -hmm. want it. I want an idea. I have to have an idea. That's why it starts here. And I work it in my head for quite a while. I sketch. I am used to doing thumbnails. So that's not a problem for me to sketch down an idea, lots of ideas. And eventually you start to work it out. And then how I Dark paintings is I have a format. I generally work vertically in that rectangle. I've tried some horizontals recently. Um, you, you work in this format and then I'm a shape maker and I think about value. That's how I start my compositions. I want a big shape. I want the simple values. You know, I'm like a broken record because I know people roll their eyes when they hear this, do a value study, do three values, do two values, I don't care, but keep it simple. And that for me is how I begin these, a structure, a foundation for my paintings. So um, I guess we can sort of go to that first painting, which, uh, Grace and the two Napoleons. Do you have that, Ron? I do. How's this? Here it is, yeah. Now, this is an older painting. I mean, I did it, I think it's 2014 or something, 2015. But you can see this whole Napoleon theme is just starting right there. <laughs> I, didn't, I never thought this was going to take off into something else, but it did. <laughs> Anyway, um, but, you know, even in this painting, there is this big white shape that's interrupted by this big other shape coming in from the left. And there's a direction to it. Uh, you know, that shape, that dog is looking right at that little doll that she's handling. And from that doll, now here's where, you know, I would say I never planned for this at all, but I knew when this painting was done, or I thought it was done, it wasn't done. There was something missing, that, that thing that I know I say, oh, I worked so hard and I got the idea and here it is. This took some time, but this white, line, this white circle curve that takes you 
right from her finger, right through the dog, up to her head. And then there's some brushwork there. And then you just go down her face with that feather, boom, back. So there's this circular design, this, mm -hmm. this motion, this direction. It's repeated in the background theme, this motif of circular. It's in her dress pattern. Those things... Um, I think as I worked it, I saw what was happening. So maybe that's intuitive. <laughs> but I mean, that's a design element using that kind of motif. And all of that is for the cause of helping the viewer understand the idea, move through the painting. They're not stuck on her face, which, you know, I know that's where we all go initially, but um, I, I'm always fond of this painting. I, I think this was a really successful painting. This was on gold gesso. This is watercolor and gouache wow. on gold gesso which is a lot of fun to work on. I've taught a lot of workshops on that subject because you can lift, it's just. Can you get, uh, give us a little bit of the story of the meaning by Napoleon there, why it's there, uh, why you picked that character? <laughs> well, actually it's my grandmother as a little girl. And well, the two Napoleons, obviously there's the little doll, but you know, you're supposed to think, oh, the dog must be named Napoleon too. That was my big doby that yeah. I had. Yeah. And uh, no, that uh, that painting did really well at American Watercolor. It, it won a medal. It was, I was happy about that painting. Mm -hmm. So anyway, next, let's try the next one, see what we have. Okay, now this is a more, much more recent painting. This is on canvas. I have uh, been painting on canvas. I went from watercolor to acrylic, played around. And you know, this is all part of this series called Prudence, which is a whole long story. We don't have time for that. But um, this is, an interesting painting because I have done this painting a couple of times and this one I consider really successful. You know, they're not always successful, but um, I was happy with this big shape at the bottom and that's how I look at it. I know there is this enormous pattern that's all full of contrast over here on the left, which is definitely designed that way. I want you to look there. That's really what's important in this painting. The mother and this little character, they're grounded. I love these dark back, uh, these dark bottoms that kind of hold the painting together, hold that shape together. It also lets me avoid feet and hoofs and whatever. <laughs> but I like the idea that this painting is grounded. And then yeah, the, uh, the, the tension or the contrast, uh, you, you can get that with color, but I was amazed at the patterns of the boy who's the messenger, I guess, or carrying the message in the, uh, and then the Asian. Uh, those outfits are so uh, uh, different. They create a lot of, uh, I say tension, but a lot of interest. Well, they're, and they're fun to paint. You know, I love painting pattern. But um, I mean, there's just so much contrast there. You know, the black and white, obviously. You say something about the bird. Well, I haven't gotten there yet, Ron. Hang on. <laughs> no. All right. This painting didn't always have a bird. And that bird is a particular bird. But, you know, when I had this painting just sitting there with these frames in the background, these sort of values that are just very middle, light middle values, sort of all neutral. I just knew this painting wasn't done. So this is where, you know, now it needs some thinking. What can I do? What can I give this painting? What kind of idea, or I don't want to say a message, but something to think about. 
So, you know, this little magic wand thing, you know, takes you right to that circle again, another circle that leads your eye up to a cardinal. Now there is, you know, stories of cardinals that they're messengers from those who have passed. That's just, you know, an idea. But, you know, I was pleased with how this painting, you know, came to be. So, you know, there's this big shape down on the bottom with interesting shapes around it. You know, the left side of her dress, you know, I love that in and out and how that works. You know, I'm always concerned about shapes because my students would know this. Every shape counts. Every shape's important. You know, we have this vertical coming down on the right and the ear from the horse is interrupting it. And then you get sort of that profile. That's important to that painting. If, you know, he was tucked inside that square, I don't think it would be as interesting. But anyway, so that's the messenger. Okay, let's see what else we have here now. Oh, the fateful choice, next painting. Okay, (laughs) this. (laughs) <laughs> this is the project from hell. It was, it's five feet wide. It is a really big painting for me. And just technically uh, painting that large with acrylic, that was so challenging for me. Uh, you know, I wanted to do it. I wanted to challenge myself. Can I do this? But I'll tell you, I have a lot of respect for people that paint large paint, you know, large canvases, because, you know, just technically you getting enough paint on there is, is a trick. Um, this, the fateful choice. Now the composition in this, you know, I, I was struggling on this one because I wanted this idea of this idea of choice. And I was sort of thinking of, you know, Lady Justice, the balance idea. So there is some movement here. There, well, there is a lot of movement, actually, because you kind of go to her face. I know you do, because you got this sort of bullet shape, or the hat is so it's dark against that light uh, steer, and then her face. So I know that's where you go. I know that, but then her right arm takes you down and there again, that magic wand, every painting should have a magic wand because it's great. You can point it wherever you want people to look. (laughs) Um, You know, takes you up to the steer and then you have his horn sort of pointing you, go this away, back to the tail. So there is again, this circular motion, this little, road to take you through this painting. I don't think you can sort of sit still anywhere on this painting. It it has motion, it has movement. And uh, it's a curious painting, you know, who knows? This one sold, believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's over someone's fireplace. It really looks good. Now color choices. Uh, the oranges and browns, uh, what are you thinking when you do your color choices? Especially the white, you know, of course we know the white, uh, but the uh, those colors are so rich and uh, you have a... Well, a I was kind of color. going from a steer color. You know, I would never call me a colorist at all. I, I'm always thinking value. It's just very funny. And I love you know, using neutrals. I, you know, I'm, I'm much more in that camp than, a, you know, pure color. Um, you know, I stayed pretty much in a simple palette, I would think. You know, I mean, there's color up in that cast. I see that, that green. And, you know, I throw those things in there just for fun. But, you know, it's contrast actually against all this red or Right. Burnt umber, burnt orange color. Mm-hmm. So, but again, you know, here's a grounded painting, very grounded, because who knows? Well, actually, I sort of ran out of room, <laughs> but 
it's 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 held there it's not falling anywhere <laughs> so okay what do we have next now the uh the big piece what was it painted on this one uh, oh this is on a big canvas this is four by five feet uh -huh. <laughs> 60 inches it was big big <laughs> when did it was fun it was fun to do because it, you know I love the title. I love doing titles. I mean, I, they're important to me. I got to get the viewer somewhere into what my thinking was. You know, I mean, she has a fateful choice. It's either, you know, I just sort of hang on to this wand or I yank this tail and then who knows? <laughs> you know, it's sort of, they're, they're all autobiographical. I have to say. When did you paint the hat, the black hat? Pardon? When did you paint in the process the black hat? At the end? It's not a black, you know, it's actually this photograph. It's that little Napoleonic, you know, military hat. It's okay. part of her costume. It, it actually has, you know, this part of it. You just can't see it in this photo. Uh, wow. But I mean, there's tons of contrast there. So boom, you're right in. Okay, this, the white truck. I threw this in because, you know, I hadn't looked at it in a while. And I thought this is an interesting painting because it's very abstract in the way it's designed. Um, you know, the placement of the sheep off center, I like. And I also love that the sheep is attached to that wood beam there. And that wood beam goes up across the top, down and down and to the floor. You know, it's, a, it's an armature. It's an abstract design. I mean, all these paintings, when you, when you strip them down of the subject, they are all abstract designs, compositions. And, like Sue said, I have always said to my students, look at paintings you like and put a piece of tissue over them and trace the shapes. You will see the composition. You know, shape, do the shapes according to the values, not the subject. So on this one, I have this light sky, then I have this mountain range that's actually attached to this wood beam because they are the same value. It's a light middle value. Then I go back to a light uh, landscape there. And then I come down to a middle value. And it's a really nice shape. I like that, how it goes with that dark. And then the dark's an interesting shape because when you attach it to this sheep, you know, you get all, I don't have a pointer in that. I, maybe I do just, can you see that pointer? My mouth? No. Okay. Anyway, um, it's I'm just, Ron um, has very ab, it, it really is an abstract design. All of mine are, if you just took tissues and looked at the values and traced the values, you'll get some abstract shapes and design Amazing. okay and then oh my oh, <laughs> <laughs> now this one i, I had you know compositionally i know this has movement to it but i would say it's not as strong maybe as the others it has movement to the right and to the left because of her. But there's that magic wand again, and it takes you up to the moon, the eclipse, which is full of contrast. You can't miss that. And I'm hoping that it takes you back to this rabbit's ears, but if it doesn't, the rabbit's face will get you. It'll grab you and bring you back to her. You know, there is, there is motion in this. Um, you know, again, I have that dark bottom 
which I love. And, you know, this is, a, it, it's an interesting piece. I wouldn't say it is as strong as it could be. I maybe could have put the moon on the other side. I don't know, but mm -hmm. this is what I did. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's all I gave you there, Ron. Can we go back? I'm trying to find the pointer. <laughs> There's the pointer, but yeah, okay. Guide him. But I can't do it. I can't do it, I don't think. I can't move it, no. But I... I mean, you can see how that black was all attached. Yeah. I mean, it framed that painting. What a, I tell you, what a treat. Uh, and uh, we have so many comments with such an imagination. That, <laughs> uh, both of you, just, uh, I think those of us uh, watercolor painters, I, I think coming up with, you know, uh, something different, we often look maybe at the wrong places. And, uh, you know, being creative and not being afraid to take some risks is what I've, I've listened to today. And uh, to think through and think about it. Uh, and of course, mm -hmm. recommendation about shapes. How <laughs> uh, many times we're here. And value, value and shapes. Yeah, but when we go paint, we forget it. Of course you do, and so do I. And so I end up with a painting that's not working. I have to photograph it. Then I go look at the shapes again. And, you know, I mean, I go through that. I'm, Are you going to have a, a workshop or anything coming up that we can go to? Um, well, I'm, I'm looking at maybe teaching at Ormond Art Museum, mm -hmm. Ormond Beach, maybe. I would love to do some workshops. I just can't do anything until the fall of 23 and oh. 24 would be better. So if anybody's looking for some instructors or whatever, I'm also having a show with my dear friend, Cheryl Fletcher Kuhn here in Palm Coast in September. Yeah. So yeah, she had we'll a let everybody know at Florida Watercolor. <laughs> well, they, all of them are saying, uh, comments are coming in, how wonderful artists you are. Uh, by the way, is that a painting of in the back or it was boxes there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows. I moved to Palm Coast, Florida, and this is how I'm living. It's like boxes and I'm working in a little small bedroom. So I'm actually back into watercolor now because I don't have any room to do acrylic. And, Good. you know, God forbid I should spill it on a I'm in a house that I'm renting, so I'm like super careful. <laughs> so I am back to watercolor and I'm really trying something new right now of sort of this idea of unfinishedness. So it's like something I'm working on now. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I, I have to say that you're both. And hopefully it gets into Florida watercolor, this unfinishedness. <laughs> Sue, you have anything that uh, sparked the thought in your mind while you were watching Susan? No, I think she's amazing. <laughs> I remember her piece in Florida Watercolor called um, Foiled Again. Yeah, I just loved it. <laughs> I remember that too. I love that piece. Your, your titles are just so helpful and make my imagination run with it. So that's good. Thank you for well, that. That is important. I know you can't stress it enough. Give the viewer something they haven't seen before, a new experience. Right, right. And the so judges put, like that yeah, too. So if you put portrait number four, number three, that doesn't really say it, right? Or, yeah. Not or, the same. Yeah. I like uh, your titles. What I'm amazed is how short they are. And there are always some really, I mean, it's not, you know, some of you people have, you know, 25 words in your title. <laughs> but a few words that say so much. So uh, it's a poet. It, she's a poet. That's yeah. poetry. So, uh, how much do you charge for helping people come up with a title? Is that a <laughs> <laughs> well, I love doing that. I think that's fun. Yeah, it'd be market there. I think uh, that was just remarkable. I appreciate all the great questions that were asked today. We had over a hundred uh, five people on, and oh, it, wow. It, we interrupt a bunch of naps today. Uh, now I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, I would like for us to hear from Jackie and uh, tell us a little bit about 
Florida Watercolor Society. But first, would you tell us a little bit about uh, the uh, uh, whiskey paint? Oh, okay. So that um, that will be my confab along with Fran Mangino, who will be joining me. We're um, two of the 150 um, whiskey painters of America, um, which is miniature watercolor painting. It's a very exclusive little society that I learned about when I lived in Pittsburgh for a while. Um, it started up in the Ohio area and it's grown. And I think our members stretch across the United States now, but Fran and I both happen to be members of Florida Watercolor. And I thought not a lot of people down here know about it. So um, I thought it would be neat to do a program on it. But thank you ladies for joining us today and thank giving us a fabulous you. look at your work and discussions. We really appreciate it. Um, can't wait to see what you enter in the show this year, both of you. Mm -hmm. so. I can't wait to see it either. It's not done. <laughs> <laughs> no but anyway, um, we I just want to remind everybody that um, the deadline is coming up at the end of this month to renew your dues if you haven't um, for eligibility to get into the show this year. It used to be um, that we stretched it out until June. Um, but this year we've um, shortened the window to three months um, to, uh, you know, get you all to join a little bit quicker. Um, and we will also have a wonderful um, third Thursday demo coming up in April. I know we just have one, um, but we'll have one um, in April with Andy Evenson, who is our judge and juror. Um, so be sure to watch that because that will be a treat as well. So we're doing all sorts of things to engage uh, everyone throughout the year. So let everybody know um, the demos um, will be for members only, but the confabs, anyone can join. So if you have students or friends or anyone else, you know, that would be interested in following the confabs. Um, they can do it live on the last Sunday of the month, like we did today, or you can see them um, on our website. Right, Ron? You'll post it yeah. coming up soon. We post it here pretty soon. This web, uh, and this is open. You can watch that. Uh, any of the public can watch the confabs. Yeah, yeah, but the demos are just for members. So. Yeah. And don't forget the vote to vote on your favorite piece for the Weathering the Storm um, online show that we have up right now on our website, too, because the person that wins that award will get a $200 Cheap Joe's gift card, which is a nice little perk. So and that was mm -hmm. for anybody to do to uh, be able to enter. And thank you for everyone who did. So thank you. that's it from me. Well, I have a question for Susan and, and Stu that yeah, we're going to close with. So when it comes to painting, what's the most important part of painting? Sue yeah. Allen, what's the most Did important? I have to go first? No. <laughs> most important part of painting. Um, well, the creativity of it is the most important thing to me. It wouldn't be good for me if I didn't enjoy the process. So I'm all about process, but you can only do that once you've laid your foundation with, you know, learning to plan a painting, just like Susan talked about. Yeah. Um, it comes from a different place. Oh, I'm glad I asked. Thank you. That's very rich. Susan? Yeah, that was, <laughs> no, I think, you know, I enjoy, I sort of enjoy the struggle of coming up. Yeah, with you. that too. <laughs> I know it's odd, but um, you know, no, there's so much work. satisfaction in you know doing something and look what you know came from your hand. I, I enjoy that if it goes well. Right? <laughs> yeah, but they don't always go well. But I know that. That's I right. I'm okay with yeah. that. They yeah. become collage. <laughs> That's right. It's like problem solving, like you said. Right. Yeah. Well, we. Uh... We definitely appreciate uh, so much all of you for jumping in there and uh, being a part of today. Uh, and I love the informality of just sharing. Uh, and both of you shared your process. I think it's just uh, 
not very often we get to talk to artists and hear what in the world were you thinking or what's behind that or how did you start? And for me, that's a lot of fun. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Thank the video you. will be available. And uh, of course, uh, Susan, she's a rock, spot, rock star and Sue is an angel. So uh, <laughs> didn't say what Oh color. boy. <laughs> thank you, Ron. And thank you thanks, so much. Ron. I look forward to the ones coming up. Yes, be there or be square. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thanks.